Capacitors are devices that are commonly used in electronic devices to store small amounts of energy. How much energy they store is dependent on various physical attributes, including the conductive material the capacitor is made from and its physical design. Capacitors can charge and discharge energy much faster than batteries, but traditional capacitors cannot hold as much charge as a battery. Graphene is a substance comprised of pure carbon formed into a thin layered honeycomb lattice, usually only a couple of layers thick. The existence of graphene has been known for quite some time but has largely been ignored in product development. In recent years, its properties have become far more important. Scientists have clamored for more information about the substance. It's become so important in physics today that in 2010, it was the topic of study for experiments that earned the Nobel Prize in Physics. Until recently, Graphene was difficult and tedious to make. It required separating graphite, which is the three-dimensional form of graphene, by using scotch tape. In 2012, a team at UCLA found a way to make graphene more efficiently by using the light scribe feature on an optical DVD drive. This innovation in fabrication represents a significant breakthrough in reducing the cost of making graphene in production scale quantities. Graphene is attractive because of its incredibly high conductivity and its large molecular surface area. These two properties in tandem allow it to pack and transmit large amounts of electrons quickly, which has encouraged exploration of this material for use in applications ranging from greater power storage to improving solar technologies. In fact, electrons move so quickly through graphene that the laws of quantum physics do not apply. Instead, scientists use quantum electrodynamics to study the physical properties of graphene. To increase the capabilities of capacitors, scientists have been constructing them out of materials such as graphene to increase their charge capabilities. These new devices are being called supercapacitors because of their increased levels of capacitance. In the figure, two laser scrapped graphene sheets separated by an electrolyte and encased in a plastic sheet form a graphene based supercapacitor. There are two quantities of interest when discussing portable power sources such as batteries the amount of power a device holds, which is called its energy density, and the speed at which it can be delivered, which is called its power density. Capacitors have similar classifications. When graphene is used in a supercapacitor, both properties are increased. The honeycomb structure dramatically increases the surface area that electrons can adhere to, which increases energy density of the capacitor. The graphene allows for faster transmission of electrons, which increases the power density of the capacitor. As improvements are made in the technology, these properties will become better and better. For example, in 2010, the energy density of graphene supercapacitors had reached over 85% watt-hour per kilogram, which is nearly comparable to an average lithium-ion battery. Graphene is a single layer of carbon. It's one of the strongest materials ever known, and it's completely flexible. The discoverers of graphene won the Nobel Prize in 2010. However, the method they used to make it, which was taking graphite and peeling it with scotch tape, is not practical. So we set out to find a better method. We start with graphite oxide, which is a water dispersible material. We then coat it onto sheets of plastic. We hit it with a light from a laser. It deoxygenates, it turns it into graphene. So it's felt very exciting because we made all organic graphene in a very simple process using a consumer grade DVD drive that you can find everywhere. But the real discovery was yet to come. I think the eureka moment that you're looking for was not exactly that. The real exciting discovery came when Maher dragged me into the lab and he said, take a look at this and he just took a light bulb and he just turned it on with this little piece of graphene. But the amazing thing is, it doesn't stop working. After charging for two or three seconds, he ran this light for over five minutes. I thought we have something very important. I, I thought the world changed at that point. 
Okay, let's, let's talk about the feature. Batteries have a bad reputation, but what we're working on are supercapacitors. And supercapacitors you can think of as a charge storage device like a battery, except it charges and discharges 100 to 1,000 times faster. A battery stores a fair amount of charge, but it charges and discharges slowly. A capacitor puts out a high output, but it doesn't store much charge. So like the flash to a camera. A supercapacitor is one which combines the best attributes of both. If you think about all the electronic devices you have, right now, every time you need one, you realize, oh, I forgot to charge it up. But imagine if you could take that same device, plug it in the wall for 30 seconds or a minute, and be ready to go. Life would be very different. And eventually, we'll get to things like electric vehicles. Now, you pull into a gas station. Well, you'd pull into a charging station, and within a minute, it would charge up your car. If you think of batteries, batteries are all composed of a lot of metals. Often, they're toxic metals. And so in fact, you're not allowed to throw a battery away. But if you had something that's carbon-based, it wouldn't matter. Carbon-based, you could put it in your compost bin and use it to grow vegetables. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a scientist. And so my goal has always been to develop something that will change people's lives. Energy-dense supercapacitors will have a dramatic impact on the battery industry. As the technology gets better and better, consumers can expect to see them encroach on battery usage in mobile devices. Once energy density surpasses comparable lithium-ion batteries, supercapacitors will become more commonly used to provide faster charging, faster power delivery, higher cycle times, and longer lifetimes. Batteries enjoy such widespread use because they're effective at storing large amounts of energy, but they can't discharge that energy very quickly. Traditional capacitors can't store a lot of energy, but they can charge and discharge quickly. Supercapacitors built from graphene attempt to enjoy the benefits of both devices by storing lots of energy and being charged and discharged very quickly. You'll notice from the table that there are some dramatic differences between average supercapacitors and lithium-ion batteries. For example, supercapacitors can charge faster, which is incredibly useful for items that are used regularly, such as cell phones or electric cars. They can deliver power to devices faster, which will reduce the potential fires from drawing too much current from batteries. Unlike batteries, they can be fully discharged, which helps with storage maintenance and transportation, and they possess no memory characteristics, such as those imposed on chemical batteries. This means minimal decline in capacity over the life of the supercapacitor. However, for now, batteries still store more energy and are less expensive per watt hour. This plot further illustrates how supercapacitors compare to other mobile power products. Here supercapacitors are referred to as electrochemical capacitors. It is apparent that they've improved in capabilities. They've overtaken the battery market and will continue to encroach as more improvements are made. Current applications for supercapacitors center around industries where the energy density for the device is not critical. In these cases, a larger power supply is acceptable in exchange for the many other benefits that come with supercapacitors. For example, mining vehicles, military, buses and trains, and deep sea well drilling, as well as uninterrupted power supplies for critical applications such as radar and sonar. Future applications will become more prevalent as supercapacitors overtake lithium-ion batteries in terms of energy storage. When the tipping point is reached, they will be more attractive to engineer into consumer electronics such as cell phones and tablets. They will also be important for electric cars because the higher power delivery from a supercapacitor will allow electric cars to accelerate faster. The supercapacitor market is large and is expected to surpass $1 billion by 2015. As energy density improves and lower cost alternatives are found to current production methods, graphene supercapacitors could begin stealing market share from the much larger $15 billion battery market. Improvements in supercapacitors will allow the technology to overtake most battery technology in the marketplace. 
Once a tipping point in energy storage is reached, then the key drivers on supercapacitors will be regulations and consumer interest. Regulations because supercapacitors are less harmful to the environment, and consumer interest because the additional features and improved green classification will be desired by the end user. However, these will be slow drivers in the range of five or more years. The regulatory driver alone could take as long as 10 years. Because of the modular nature of batteries, graphene supercapacitors are not a disruptive technology to any industry beyond the battery industry, and only marginally disruptive in the battery industry. Devices that currently operate on batteries can easily be modified to run on supercapacitors within a single production generation. It is likely that these products will not only adapt to supercapacitors, but the companies that build them will find new functionality from the new technology to add to their products to improve their competitive advantage. The battery industry itself is likely to be more turbulent for a time. A transition to supercapacitors is more evolutionary than disruptive. Therefore, major players in the battery industry can protect themselves by migrating to the new technology. Any difficulties they face will most likely result from an influx of startups and established companies that have already developed supercapacitors, attempting to capitalize on the new technology. Strategic moves by battery producers to modify their products early on will allow them to maintain their market share.